Hey everybody, welcome to Sokka's Tech Spot. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a Pi-hole DNS on your network. This will allow you to see less ads on your network, whether it's in your browser or on a mobile app. Now this is not going to get rid of every ad that you're going to see, but it will definitely lessen them and there's a lot of customizability if you want to take it that far. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here's what you're going to need if you want to follow along. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi 2 or higher with a power cable, an SD card 8GB or more, preferably 16GB, a keyboard that you could use with a Raspberry Pi alongside your computer uh, if you want, or you can just swap your computer keyboard, uh, Ethernet cable, a computer with an SD card port, and a monitor with HDMI. You can also do this via SSH remotely, but I'm going to try to make this a little easier, so we're just going to go with the approach, assuming you have a monitor you can use, or you can plug you know, the HDMI in and out of your current monitor if you are uh, already occupying that port. Either way, you just need to have a way to connect to the monitor. And also make sure you have access to the router on your network. We will need to go in there and change a couple of the uh, configuration settings. So uh, yeah, make sure you can access your router. All right, for the software, we're only gonna need one thing and that's this Raspberry Pi imager. And that's this application that I have open here. So you can just um, download the installer and install it like any other Windows application. And this is what should open up afterwards. So go ahead and do that. Then we're going to make sure to have our SD card installed. Let's go ahead and go to choose the OS and uh, let's go to Raspberry Pi other and we're going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32 bit. Now you can get the full OS with the GUI interface and the desktop environment and all of that. So if you do prefer a GUI interface, go ahead and do that. But if you are using an eight gigabyte SD card, you want to go with the light one. Um, especially because it does take up a, a little more room going with the full OS. Um, that being said, uh, we are going to be using the command line anyway, so make sure if you do get the uh, desktop version, then you can uh, access the terminal and you know how to do that. Go ahead, choose light if you want to follow along. And then over here, you're going to choose your SD card. And I have a 64 gig card. It's a little overkill for something like this, but we're just going to go ahead and do that. And if you have any data on your SD card, uh, now is the time to back that up because when you click right, it's going to format that card. It's getting rid of everything on there. So go ahead and click uh, right. Let's go through. And this is going to take a couple minutes potentially. Um, so just uh, we'll come back when it's done. All right. So it's a new day. I had some issues with my 64 gigabyte micro SD card. I don't know what happened, but it died, which is a damn shame because that thing was 64 gigabytes. I probably used it a handful of times before it died. Really disappointed. Not the point. Uh, the only other SD card I had was a two, gig two gigabyte card. So I'm going to do the unspeakable and I'm going to use it. Um, I already installed the Raspberry Pi OS Lite on there. So that should be fine. Um, all I need to do now is boot into it. But before we do that, if you want to have SSH abilities with the Raspberry Pi that we're going to be using for this, you have to create an SSH file within the root folder of the installation. Otherwise, you won't be able to access it via SSH. Just think of it like a flag that enables it to work. All you have to do is come in here. This is my uh, Raspberry Pi SD card, if that wasn't obvious. And we're going to go ahead and right click, and do a new text file uh, get everything including the extension so if you don't have if you don't see the extension you might have to enable that within your Windows Explorer but get everything including the extension and delete it put in SSH and then we get a prompt do you want to change the extension yes so there you go. You just want to have a blank SSH file and not even a text file just a blank file if it's text it's not going to work that's it and now you have enabled SSH on your Raspberry Pi. I got everything set up here. Let's go ahead and plug it in and boot up. There we go. All right, so we're booting up here and I guess we'll just come back when this is done. So when we are booted up, you should see something pretty much exactly like this. And the default uh, username and password for the Raspberry Pi is going to be Pi for the username and raspberry for the password. That's it, and we're in. 
Alright, before we go any further, we want to make sure we have the right keyboard locale set up so we have the right configuration when we type the keys and we get the respective characters. So to test this, hold the shift button and then hit the key above the enter button and hopefully we should see a pipe. I don't see a pipe, I see a tilde, which means my keyboard layout is not set up properly. I am using a smaller keyboard, so that could be one of the reasons why, but it's not working for me. If you know how to get the pipe symbol, good for you, but if you cannot get the pipe symbol, follow along. So first we're gonna do sudo or sudo raspi dash config. And we're gonna get this popping up, go down to localization options, and then go to keyboard. It's going to take a second to load, so we'll come back. On this screen, we want to just select a keyboard that is not international. So I'll do generic 104 key PC, but I'm going to use the regular, not the international. Uh, for some reason, it's still pointing me to the UK. Huh. What if we click other? There we go. English US is what we need. And then I think I can just go up here and hit English US and let's just go default no compose key and we should come back when this is done all right so I'm gonna click tab and then move to the right and finish and we're back so let's try it out um, let me get some space here I'll type I'll hold shift and hit that key again and now we have the pipe symbol that's all we needed so we're good to go and uh, yeah, if you were having that issue, that's how you figure that out. Let us move on. Okay, now that we have everything set up how we need it to be, let's continue on and type in this command that you see right here. I'll go ahead and highlight it to make it a little clearer, but we're gonna type this in right in the command line and you wanna pay attention to the, curl the capitals and everything, the spaces, it has to be pr uh, proper here. So we're gonna type in curl space dash lowercase s capital s l space h t t p s colon forward slash forward slash install dot pi dash hole dot net space this is where the pipe comes in space bash that's it hit enter and it i am not connected to the internet one second <laughs> Uh, we're gonna try doing that again. So, all going well, it should start doing its thing, and there it is. We're gonna let it do its thing, and then uh, we'll come back, and you should probably just view it to make sure no errors pop up, but there shouldn't be. It should just install by itself, and then we'll configure it, and we'll be good to go. All right, so once your installation is done, you should be presented with this screen. The installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Asterisk, you have to configure it. So hit OK or enter, and then it's going to tell you you can donate, which I highly support because they are providing this free software that is going to make your life way better. So if you have a couple bucks to throw their way, feel free to do that. Okay, so this pie hole, it's telling you it's going to be a server, which means we need a static IP, and we're going to set that um, on our router when the time comes. So um, let's just go ahead and follow the rest of the instructions and you'll see. It's really straightforward. Okay, so the pie hole itself is a DNS server, but it's kind of a step before the worldwide DNS server. So we have our own local DNS to connect to the worldwide DNS to go on our websites. Google is pretty popular. I mean, a lot of people use Google's uh, open DNS here. Um, I like to use Cloudflare, so I would recommend Cloudflare. Or if you have a custom DNS that you know of, you can type it in yourself. Um, just for consistency, I'm going to go with Cloudflare. This step doesn't matter. It's not going to change the way you install. So pick whatever you want. Yeah, we'll just go with their suggested. So you could hit tab for the next level. And we'll just go with that. Uh, we can leave these alone. Hit tab for OK. Yeah, this is fine. So you might have other settings. So if your router had, does not have a default IP address of 192.168.1.1, which is the usual default IP for a router uh, for the gateway, then you'll have to change that on your own. And a way you can determine that is if you have a computer that's currently connected to your router and also the internet, 
you can open up a command prompt. Oh, I hope you can see this. <laughs> you can do IP config space forward slash all and then you'll see um, all of your network information listed here. What you want to do is find uh, your default gateway which I see right here. This is my default gateway and it'll, it'll tell you what it's using to connect to the internet. Now whatever you see there will be what you put in uh, over here. So if those two differ, mine don't, then you'll have to change that. You can also change your IP address for the Raspberry Pi, but I wouldn't suggest it because it, you're given an IP address that's not currently being used. And if you don't have a full list of all the devices IP addresses on your network, you'll have conflicting IPs. So I would say just go with the default and then you can make this one static later on. I know that's a lot of information, but it has to be said. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, I'm gonna use the current settings. Yeah, see here it is. It's possible your router could still try to assign this IP to a device, which would cause a conflict. But in most cases, the router is smart enough not to do that. So go ahead and read the rest of it if you would like. Otherwise, hit okay. Uh, do we wanna install the web admin interface? I say yes, because it'll give you a graphical interface that you can interact with the Pi hole. So I'm gonna hit tab and hit okay. Do you wanna install the web server? Let's go ahead and just do the recommended. Do you want to log queries? Yes, we do. That's the whole idea is like you have more control over your network and you can see the insights. Uh, okay, there's privacy mode. Show everything for right now. You could always change this if you want, up to you. And there we go. So it's gonna do the configuration and then it will be done and we'll be able to log in to our Pi hole. But we are fully installed and this thing is ready to go. So I'm uh, just gonna reiterate that this is our IP that we're gonna be using um, for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, your number might be different. You might have, uh, well, the 138 might be different. So for me, it's 138. For you, it could be something else. Make sure you uh, take note of that. And then that's how you log in. It says the web interface could be accessed using either pi.hole slash admin or use the IP address slash admin. So I'm gonna use the IP address because I do have a Raspberry Pi that I use on a daily basis already plugged in. But we're gonna go ahead, hit enter, and we're done. That's it. You can basically disconnect it at this point, at least disconnect the monitor. Do not disconnect the ethernet because you wanna leave this thing on. All right, I forgot to mention one thing. Your admin password is also in this text box. So make sure to take note of that. Uh, as you can see, mine is D underscore DB5TDL. So that's what I'm gonna use to log in. Yours is gonna be different. It's always randomized. You could always change it later as well. But for right now, take note of that or else uh, you won't have access. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and access the pie hole now. So I'm gonna type in the pass or the IP address and it's gonna be dot one dot one three eight and then slash admin. There we go, we are in like Flynn. So this is what you're gonna see. That means it's up and running. That is good, it's a good sign. So you could also log into it. All right, so let's go ahead and type in our password. And we're in. There shouldn't be any activity really going on because it's not my DNS yet. So that's what we have to do next is we have to set up the DNS. So like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, you have to have access to your router. And uh, that's just typing in the default gateway. All right, so we are in the router. Your interface is gonna look very different depending on which router you have. This one specifically is the SUSE TM AC1900, but depending what you have, you're gonna be doing this in a different part of the settings. The main thing is you wanna find your DNS settings. So it's, uh, I forgot how it, where it is exactly. I'm just gonna click around until we find it. How about that? All right, there it is. So it might happen to be under LAN, DHCP server. They always put these things in different places. Um, so basically when you're here, you wanna find the DNS server that your router is using and you wanna type in your um, Pi hole IP address in this box. Now you can have, uh, sometimes you can have multiple DNSs. You might have a primary DNS, secondary DNS. You're welcome to have uh, the secondary DNS be the Google DNS, which is 1.1.1.1. That's the only one I remember. So if you want, you can go ahead and put a secondary, but I wouldn't. I would just let your DNS be the one handling everything. So that's that. That's all you wanna do is type in the address there. After you change it, make sure to save it. And then that's pretty much it. Your router might reboot or something. So 
make sure no one's using the internet doing sensitive things while you're configuring it. Once you have done that, you should start seeing traffic building up on your Pi Hole. So after you change your DNS on the router, come back to your Pi Hole dashboard and you're gonna start seeing numbers uh, going up. So you can see devices on the network are pinging and making queries to the internet and it's all going through the Pi Hole. It's keeping track of everything. It has blocked several thousands already and this is a percentage of how much traffic is being blocked. So 17.1% of network traffic is being blocked that could have been used to make my data rates go up or use my data for an additional 17% of queries. I just dropped something, doesn't matter. Basically, I'm saving 17% of the traffic that otherwise would have been just advertisement or unnecessary calls to the internet. You can also go to the query log and you can see the latest queries that were made. So you can see I have uh, stuff pinging Amazon and that just happened a couple seconds ago. And you can see exactly what um, is being contacted. So T-Mobile, that's my phone. There's Oculus stuff going out, Google stuff. You can basically monitor the network and see what kind of traffic is moving through. If there's something happening you don't like, you can go ahead and take this domain and put it on the block list. So like you can see a couple of these red ones right here. Uh, let me zoom in a little more. So you can see I have some advertisement being blocked already. Google Ad Services, doubleclick.net. All right, that's how you set up the Raspberry Pi to be a Pi Hole DNS. This should definitely uh, make your internet experience throughout your entire network much better. A couple of things to keep in mind after you get everything set up, make sure to change the password to the Raspberry Pi and to the Pi Hole web interface because it's still going to use the default. So if you forgot that, you're going to be SOL. Um, other than that, I hope this was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you need any assistance. I'll help you as much as I can. Um, yeah, well, thanks for watching. Make sure to sub for more helpful videos like this in the future. You can follow me at these other spots, and I'll catch you next time.